Is your colon getting up to 80% of its daily energy from the fuel you provide? Or are you starving the very cells that keep your gut running smoothly? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Today we're examining butyrate, how your gut microbes make it, why your colon cells depend on it, and what you can do to support steady production through daily choices. I'm Ethan Foster, and I'll guide the discussion so you can use this information right away. I'm Alara Skye. We'll keep this focused and practical, drawing only from the article's core points. What butyrate is, how it maintains your gut barrier, which habits help you make more of it, what common misconceptions to ignore, and five step-by-step -step strategies you can apply. Let's start at the beginning. When you eat fiber from whole foods, fruits, vegetables, legumes, and whole grains, the fiber largely passes through your upper digestive tract intact. Once it reaches your colon, specific microbes ferment it into short-chain fatty acids, acetate, propionate, and butyrate. Names like Roseburia and Fischcolibacterium often come up here because they help turn that fiber into usable fuel. You rely on that fermentation because butyrate is a preferred fuel for colon cells, your colonocytes. They convert butyrate into acetyl-CoA, send it through the Krebs cycle in the mitochondria, and generate ATP. Research highlighted in the article estimates colonocytes meet roughly 70% to 80% of their energy needs from butyrate, which keeps everyday activities, like fluid exchange and lining upkeep, running in a normal, efficient way. That energy production ties directly to barrier integrity. Your intestinal lining uses tight junction proteins, ZO, 1, occludin, claudins, to regulate what gets through to your bloodstream. Butyrate supports normal expression of those gatekeepers, which helps you maintain a sturdy barrier instead of a leaky one that leaves you uncomfortable and reactive. There's another layer of support. As your colonocytes metabolize butyrate, they consume oxygen and lower local oxygen levels. That shift favors beneficial anaerobic bacteria, which then produce even more short-chain fatty acids. You get a positive feedback loop that stabilizes your microbiome and supports mucus production along the colon wall. Diet and lifestyle determine how strong that loop becomes. The straightforward step is fiber from whole foods organic whole grains, fruits, vegetables, and legumes, because that's the substrate your microbes ferment. Variety matters. Different fibers ferment at different rates, so mixing soluble and insoluble sources broadens the benefits. Increase fiber gradually. If you add too much too fast when you're not used to it, you can feel bloated or gassy. A slow ramp lets your gut adapt. Hydration matters as well. Without enough fluids, a higher fiber approach can leave you constipated, which works against your goal of a comfortable, regular pattern. Fat quality is part of the equation. The article cautions that diets high in polyunsaturated fats rich in linoleic acid, especially soybean and corn oils, shift the microbial balance in ways that undermine short-chain fatty acid production. Avoid those fats as much as possible if you want to promote a healthier gut environment. Exercise, sleep, and stress habits also show up in the data. Physical activity is associated with greater microbial diversity and better gut transit time. Aim for adequate sleep, seven to eight hours, and keep stress in check with approaches that work for you because sleep loss and high stress disrupt your microbiome and make consistent SCFA production harder. There's a practical note on antibiotics. They can save lives, but they also reduce both harmful and beneficial bacteria. If you're prescribed a course, add probiotic or prebiotic-rich foods, yogurt, kefir, kimchi, sauerkraut, to help reseed and support microbial diversity as you recover. Let's clear up common misconceptions. First, fiber supplements are not a substitute for whole foods. One isolated fiber cannot mimic the range you get from fruits, vegetables, legumes, and whole grains, which also deliver micronutrients and phytochemicals. Second, 
not all fats are harmful to your gut. The article points to options like grass-fed butter, ghee, tallow, and coconut oil as compatible in moderation. Third, protein isn't automatically a problem. Issues arise when you rely on highly processed meats and neglect fiber. Finally, probiotics don't directly introduce butyrate. They can help create conditions where fiber-fermenting microbes flourish, but the butyrate itself depends on those fermenters, plus your fiber intake. Now, the five strategies to increase butyrate production. One, enjoy naturally fiber-rich foods. Berries, pears, and a rotation of roasted vegetables are simple ways to raise intake with meals you'll actually look forward to eating. Two, if your gut is severely compromised, avoid certain fibers temporarily. Your gut needs to be ready before you load up. Three, eliminate key gut disruptors. The article highlights linoleic acid, excess estrogen, and EMFs as targets while you focus on restoring cellular energy production. That cleanup sets the stage for a better microbial balance and more reliable SCFA output. Four, during the initial healing phase, use low fiber carbohydrates to keep your cellular energy production supported while you calm irritation. The point is to provide fuel without provoking the symptoms that come with rough, hard to tolerate fibers when you're not ready. Five, as you stabilize, gradually reintroduce fiber so your SCFA producing bacteria have the substrates they need to make more butyrate. A few quick answers from the article's FAQs. Can you just supplement with beauty rate? Supplements exist, but encouraging your own production with a fiber-rich diet is typically more sustainable and cost-effective. Consult a qualified professional if you're considering a supplement. Does cooking destroy fiber? Cooking may alter structure or solubility, but generally doesn't eliminate it, and light cooking can make some vegetables easier to digest. Are there signs you're low in beauty rate? There's no simple home test. Frequent digestive discomfort paired with a low-fiber diet suggests you could benefit from gradually increasing fiber. Is all fiber equal for beauty rate? Different fibers yield different SCFA ratios. A varied intake is recommended to support overall balance. Here's your takeaway. You can influence butyrate production every day. Emphasize diverse whole food fibers. Avoid high linoleic acid oils like soybean and corn. Move your body, protect your sleep, manage stress, and support your microbiome after antibiotics with fermented foods. If your gut is struggling, clean up disruptors first. Use gentle low fiber carbs to stabilize, then add fiber back slowly to build momentum. Your challenge today is simple. Choose one meal and add two distinct whole food fiber sources such as a serving of legumes and a leafy green side, or, if you're in a healing phase, remove soybean and corn oils from your kitchen and plan a gradual fiber reintroduction over the next two weeks. Track how you feel each day so you can adjust with clarity. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.